Well, up, y'all? It's Warren, Mr. Dan Tarim Ray Melly, and listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Tuesday, October 20th, 2020, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash entertainment report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at The Enter Report, or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Oscar-winning actor Jeff Bridges announced on social media Monday that he is battling cancer. Bridges tweeted, as the dude would say, New Shed has come to light, referencing to the iconic character he played in the 1998 comedy film The Big Lebowski. He added, I've been diagnosed with lymphoma. Although it is a serious disease, I feel fortunate that I have a great team of doctors and the prognosis is good. I'm, st- I'm starting treatment and will keep you posted on my recovery. Uh, the seven-year-old actor concluded, I'm profoundly grateful for the love and support from my family and friends. Thank you for your prayers and well wishes. And while I have you, please remember to go vote because we're all in this together. Bridges is known for his roles in The Last Picture Show, Star Man, The Fabulous Baker Boys, The Fisher King, True Grit, Crazy Heart, The Giver, and Hell or High Water. Bette Mittler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Kathy Najimy are witches once again in a new Hocus Pocus reunion photo. Mittler posted the image on Instagram Sunday, which featured herself, Parker, and Najimy in costume as their characters Winfred, Sarah, and Mary, respectfully from the 1993 film. Midler is promoting the one-hour Hocus Pocus virtual reunion that is set to take place on October 30th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to benefit her nonprofit organization, the New York Restoration Project. Evira will host the special titled In Search of the Sanderson Sisters, a Hocus Pocus Halloween takeover. Tickets to view the reunion are available for 10 bucks. Glenn Close, Billy Crystal, Jamie Lee Curtis, John Debney, uh, Samantha Diaz, Harry Guinness, Todrick Hall, Jennifer Hudson, um, Angelica, uh, Angelica Johnson Reyes, Michael Kors, Adam Lambert, George Lopez, Alex Mulfat, Vanessa Shaw, Martin Short, Sarah Silverman, John Stamos, Meryl Streep, Keenan Thompson, uh, Sophie Van Hanselberg, and other surprise guests will also make appearances during the special. Harrison Ford and Ed Helms are attached to star in a new comedy film together titled The Miserable Adventures of Burt Squire Aboard the Horn High Yo from STX Films and LD Entertainment. Helms will portray a family man going through a midlife crisis who takes a dream sailing vacation. Helms will then find himself shipwrecking the Atlantic Ocean along with a charming but unhinged sea captain played by Ford. The film is inspired by a true story. Ben Balea penned the film's screenplay. Mickey Liddell, Peter Shanlinen, and Kim Zubik from LD Entertainment are producing. Michael Glassman is executive producer. No director or release date has been set yet. Uh, the chairman of the STX Films Motion Picture Group, Adam Fogelson, said in a statement, there are no better, uh, There's no one better than Ed Helms to play an everyday guy who gets saddled with every comedic misfortune life could throw his way. And Harrison is going to create yet another memorable and iconic character as an unhipped sea captain. Instead of a road trip comedy, we can't wait to see these unlikely buddies in the sea-fearing comedy. Ford last starred in The Call of the Wild and is set to surprise his role as Indiana Jones in the new film. Helms last appeared in Netflix's Coffee and Kareem. Netflix is giving a glimpse of the new film, The Christmas Chronicles 2. The streaming service shared a trailer for the movie Monday featuring longtime couple Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn as Santa and Mrs. Claus. The preview shows Kate, played by Darby Camp, return to Santa's village at the North Pole. Kate is now accompanied by Jack, played by Jazir Bruno, the son of her mom's new boyfriend. Kate and Jack... Uh, team up with Santa, played by Russell, and Mrs. Claus, played by Han, after a mysterious troublemaker named uh, Bell's Nickel, played by Julian Dennison, steals the Christmas star from Santa's village. The group must work together to save Christmas. The Christmas Chronicles is a sequel to The Christmas Chronicles, which premiered on Netflix in 2018. The film was directed by Chris Columbus, who produced the first film. Netflix previously released a teaser trailer for the sequel, The Christmas Chronicles, uh, which will premiere November 25th, and in selected theaters and on Netflix. 
The Chinese state media is spotlighting the sacrifices of Chinese soldiers during the 1950-1953 Korean War in new movies and in animation amid ongoing tensions with the United States. China observed the 70th anniversary of the war to resist U.S. aggression and aid Korea on Monday, marking the day 70 years ago when the Chinese People's Volunteer Army entered present-day North Korea to fight U.S. and South Korean troops. State media reported Monday at least four Korean war films will be released to commemorate the anniversary. More than 700,000 Chinese troops fought during the conflict that ended with an armistice in 1953. According to China.org.cn, the most anticipated movie is Sacrifice or Jing uh, chang Yun in China. Three acclaimed directors, Guan Hu, Front Gao, and Liu Yang, created the film, state media reported. The report said an animation salute to the heroes is expected to be released in theaters Friday. China is also observing the 70th anniversary of Chinese involvement in the war with new commemorative coins. A 100 young commemorative gold coin featured a dove and oil branches, and a 10 young silver coin shows Chinese soldiers crossing the Yalu River into North Korea, according to uh, state tabloids Global Times. Chinese President Xi Jinping said Monday, Chinese military contributions towards defending North Korea should be remembered. The great spirit of the Chinese army must be carried forward. Xi said that during a visit to a 70th anniversary exhibit, according to Zhang Hyun News Agency. Retired NFL player Vernon Davis was voted off of season 29 of Dancing with the Stars in Los Angeles on Monday night. Davis was partnered with professional dancer Peter Mugatroy for the ABC competition series. Charles Oakley, Carol Baskin, Anne Hayes, and Jesse Metcalf were previously eliminated. Still in the running for the coveted Mirror Ball Trophy are cheer com, um, coach Monica Adama, the Bachelorette alum Caitlin Bristow, Selling Sunset star Chriselle Stosh, actresses Sky Jackson and Justina Machado, reality TV stars Janae May and Nev Shulman, Backstreet Boys singer AJ McLean, Rapper Nelly and, and Olympic figure skater Johnny Weir. Tyra Banks is the show's host. Carolina Naba, Bruno Tanini, and Derek Huff are the judges this season. The Bachelorettes, Hannah Bristow, and her partner Alan Burston won season 28 in November. In a related story, Backstreet Boys member AJ McLean appeared on Good Morning America Monday to discuss his 20-year battle with drug addiction. McLean says that he kept his addiction a secret until his destructive behavior started affecting the boy band. So you mentioned how Backstreet Boys members would dump ice water onto him in order to wake him up from being passed out. McLean said to ABC correspondent Will Reeve, Everybody started to catch on. I wasn't me anymore. It was just living a lie. McLean said he hit rock bottom during a trip to Vegas 11 months ago, but has since stayed sober while working with the program and a sponsor. McLean says the turning point for me was when I came back home, my wife could smell it on my breath, and my youngest of two daughters would not sit with me. He continued, there's too much love to live for today. My beautiful children, my amazing wife, my career, my brothers, I never felt more grounded than I do today. He competes currently on Dancing with the Stars, Season 29. Vice has renewed the professional wrestling docuseries Dark Side of the Ring for a third season. The third season has been given a 14-episode order after the first two seasons contained 10 episodes each. The show will return uh, in 2021. Dark Side of the Ring explores the controversial stories surrounding the world of professional wrestling. Season 2 began in March with a two-part episode of Chris Benoit, who killed his wife Nancy and seven-year-old son Daniel before he hung, up, hung himself in 2007. Other episodes cover the death of Owen Hart, the careers of the Road Warriors and New Jack, WWE's Brawl for All, and more. Wrestler Chris Jericho, announcer Jim Ross personality Jim Cornette, and more appeared during the second season. Evan Hulsney served as the executive producer and writer with Jason Eisner as an executive producer and director. Vice has not announced which subjects will be explored in the third season. Uh, executive Vice President and General Manager of Vice Television, Morgan Hertzand, said in a statement, Dark Side of the Ring is a knockout show for Vice TV. The tag team executive producers of Evan Hulsney and Jason Eisner are the true heavyweight champions of the world of TV. And we're so excited to pin down a third season of the Incredible series. Uh, 
Herson said, Season 1 and 2 of The Dark Side of the Rings are examples of the compelling, thought-provoking, and engaging story we champion here at Vice TV. We can't wait to see that the series will throw down in the third round. Stephen Colbert will host a live Election Day special November 3rd on Showtime at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Late Show host will give commentary on the election in the commercial-free special titled Stephen Colbert's Election Night 2020, Democracy's Last Stand, Building Back America Great Again Better 2020. Charlemagne the God and Alex Wagner and John Hillman and Mark McKinnon of Showtime's political series The Circus will appear as special guests. No audience will be present due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Colbert last hosted the live election date special on Showtime in 2016 titled Stephen Colbert's Live Election Night Democracy Series Finale, Who's Going to Clean Up This, this Mess? Colbert said in a statement, it's going to be a great night, although my therapist has reminded me America has uh, to want to change. Jamie Lynn Spears teased a Zoe 101 reunion on Instagram and tagged her former co-stars for the Nickelodeon series. Spears on Sunday uploaded a short teal and purple colored video that featured the phrase, Are You Ready? Um, the actress captioned, We're back, are you ready? Uh, captioned the pose before tagging her co-stars, Sean Flynn, Aaron Sanders, Matthew Underwood, Chantel Jeffries, and Chris Macy, who are also uploaded reunion teasers on their Instagram pages. Zoe 101 aired for four seasons on Nickelodeon from 2005 to 2008. The series followed Spears as she attended a private boarding school. Spears and her castmates previously reunited in July during a special sketch on All That. Alan Camel remains dedicated to advocating for black models more than 30 years into her career in the fashion industry. The 50-year-old model discussed in the November issue of Vogue how her commitment to speak out against racism and other injustices hasn't changed over the years. While Campbell's dedication hasn't wavered, she said more people have started to speak out and bring awareness to issues in the fashion industry. Campbell said, I never used to say the word racism. I just used to say it's territorialism. I never wanted people to say that I used that as an excuse that I was throwing that word out. She added, now I'm happy that everyone's all on the same page, that everyone feels uncomfortable uh, to come out about their experiences without feeling some stigma. But for me, nothing's changed. I'm going to speak the same way. Campbell also discussed her battles with the press and fighting the narrative of the, quote, angry black woman. She says, I'm quite over it. Is it now that we have permission to speak? Well, I've always spoken. Campbell did say that she speaks with greater in, in, uh, intentionality today. She said, there were a few things that I would do when I was younger that I was told were bad for my race. Now the things I do are now uh, just for me anymore. I think more of, our, of, more of my culture and my race as opposed to thinking of ju about just me. Campbell will revisit her career as a model in the new Apple TV Plus docuseries, The Supermodels. The series explores the iconic modeling careers of Campbell, Cindy Crawford, Linda Indubagilista, and Kersey Turlington. In the Vogue interview, Campbell said the series was, quote, really worth holding out for. She said, if we're going to do something, we're going to be involved in it throughout the whole process from beginning to end. Linda, Christy, and Cindy, these are my sisters. The four of us tell it. I wasn't going to do it any other way. The voice coach Gwen Stefani says season 19 feels, quote, natural and personal despite the COVID-19 pandemic. The 51-year-old singer and television personality appeared Monday's episode of Today, where she discussed her experience filming the voice during the health crisis. Season 19 will feature Stefani, her boyfriend Blake Shelton, Kelly Clarkson, and John Legend as, as coaches. The coaches and the contestants filmed the season with uh, COVID-19 safety guidelines in place. On today, Stefani said filming the season felt surprisingly natural. She said, it was actually not as weird as I thought. I think everybody felt even more grateful to be there because we felt special that we could actually work. I thought that it felt unusually like normal. She said, um, I think the reality part of it felt even more real because there wasn't a lot of people around. It felt like it was just us only. You don't feel the, you didn't feel the audience or the cameras or anything. It just felt like supernatural. 
Season 19 will feature fans on screen, but to live audience. As a result, Stefani said filming felt, quote, uh, intimate between the coaches. She said it just felt very relaxed and there was something fun about it. I think it's probably harder for the contestants because there wasn't the energy of the audience. She added, at the same time, I felt it was just us and them, and really personally. It was awesome. Stefani has been quarantining with Shelton and her three sons, Kingston 14, Zuma 12, and Apollo 6. When asked about a possible wedding to Shelton, Stefani said they'll see what happens. She said, well, the good news is we still like each other a lot. We'll see what happens. You know what I mean. The Voice Season 19 will premiere Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on NBC. Stefani will also appear during the 2020 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame virtual induction ceremony, which will air November 7th on HBO. And finally, Garth Brooks announced on Monday that his new album titled Fun will be released November 20th. Brooks said in a video message to fans, fun is coming and you guys have been so patient, it's time to have some fun. The new album will contain 14 tracks, including his collaboration with Blake Shelton's Dive Bar, All Day Long, Stronger Than Me, and a cover of Shallow from his, from the film A Star is Born with his wife Trisha Yearwood. Brooks will also release his second live album, Triple Triple Live Deluxe, on November 20th. Triple Live Deluxe will, con will include 30 songs over three CDs from the country star's various tours, including his world tour with Yearwood. Triple Live Deluxe will be available in six different album covers, and each will include a box set containing photos from the road. Brooks will host a virtual preview of Fun and Triple Live Deluxe through his Talk Shop Live channel Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Recently, Brooks was honored with the Icon Award at the 2020 Billboard Music Awards. And as your entertainment report for Tuesday, October 20th, 2020, I'm your host with Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at the answer report or on Instagram at the entertainment report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of the entertainment report Anytime you want on iHeartRadio, just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.